a mother is a mother. Katsa the fear of the enemy sickness. Sit for a minute. When a mother is a mother, tell me. When she holds a baby in her arms, when she breastfeeds, when she feeds the baby, when she looks at her baby, when is she a mother? I'll give you scripture. Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist. Uh, by the way, John the Baptist was Pentecostal. And John the Baptist was six months older than the Lord Jesus in the flesh. Sit for a moment, please. Sit. That's free. We will not charge you extra for an extra lesson. When a mother is a mother, Elizabeth sees Mary. And we have a theological magnificent artifact of literature that is as the subject of theological discussion and not only of literature as a literary work that they study for literature, the so-called Magnificat. Because Mary said, my soul, my spirit rejoiceth and my soul doth magnify the Lord my Savior. Who was the Lord her Savior? The Lord Jesus who was in her. But she was called the mother of the Lord. It doesn't mean she gave birth to God. God cannot be born. She didn't give birth to God. But the man, boy, baby boy man she had in her womb was God Almighty. Emmanuel, God with us. The counsel of mighty God. Everlasting Father. Amen? Do you believe that? Thank you, Lord. And Elizabeth welcomed her. And it's, I think it's chapter, still chapter one in Luke. The Gospel of Luke. It's right after the angel visited her. Right after the conception. That's so powerful. And the, the, the glory of God is here. Powerful. I want this to be part of uh, Christina. Would please put it as part of what we are doing right now. The sermon because it's it's something that you must know. What did Elizabeth say? How did she react? She said, What a great, in my words, what a great privilege that the mother of my Lord comes to me. The mother of my Lord. Elizabeth said, The mother. So when a mother is a mother, at conception, Right? The Holy Spirit will overshadow thee and the very thing that will be in thy womb is the Son of the Almighty God. God Himself, the Lord, my Savior. Because there's only one Savior and it's God. And something amazing that I heard lately from a preacher who knows what he's says scientists have observed the sperm and the egg when they come together at the time of conception they have observed a sparkling light and they cannot explain it that's why they don't give it out Please keep it because that's very powerful. It's a powerful truth about life at conception. When mother is a mother. Why don't they, why don't they say that? It's scientific. Sci scientists have observed that. 
It's science. They observed it in the laboratory. They've seen a light. Sparkling. Why? God has given the power for reproduction. And that's holy, right? That's holy. Very holy. God speaks about it. God gave the power of reproduction. From the beginning of creation, Mark 10, 6, the Lord Jesus said, He created them, created He them, male and female. Male and female. He, na he named them Adam. It's not God who named Eve, Eve. It was Adam who named Eve, Eve. God named them Adam. Man and woman, one. But you see, the holy thing that God has given us has been the subject of ridicule and the subject of persecution. But we will stand for the truth. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. So God gave the man the sperm and the woman the egg. So that's in biology. That's that's physical yet it comes from god so they say you know the father gave the sperm the father gave the seed and the woman gave the egg and they come together and then it enters the womb the womb where it's supposed to be the safest place for a baby to be it's nourished their try study about the placenta study about study about the amniotic fluid fluid Amniotic fluid, study about uh, the, the, all the pregnancy and I know just a few things. But it's amazing. God has made us in a great uh, act of uh, creation and he made us in such a powerful way. Yet the man is a killer and a murderer and they enter the safest place where a child is and they totally murdered so why have I said what I said because I want you to know about this revelation about this truth yes man gives the seed woman gives the egg it comes together it enters the womb for nine months of gestation and then the baby is born into the physical world but it's life from the beginning the father gives the seed the, the woman gives the egg they come together who gives the spirit here's my point who gives the spirit tell me who is called in Hebrews 12 the father of the spirits Ephesians 3 10 from whom all fatherhood comes who gives the spirit God, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Hence, beyond the conception, they saw a sparkling light. That's the Spirit of the Almighty God giving life at conception. Hallelujah, and that's holy, very holy. What an honor for the mother of Milo. The mother of Milo. She's not the mother of God. She's the mother of the man Jesus, but the man Jesus is God. It's the same as they said. They crucified the Lord of glory. Can the Lord of glory be crucified? No, but the man, Jesus, could be crucified. But the man they crucified was and is the God of glory. And that they couldn't kill. And that God, the mother, Mary, 
could not give birth to. She just gave birth to the man. Jesus. But the man Jesus is my Lord Jesus. And Mary needed a savior, meaning she was a sinner as everyone else. Listen, we respect Sister Mary. Sister Mary, yes. We respect. Never said anything wrong about her. We honor her as the mother of the Lord Jesus, as a saint of God. But as a person, as a holy woman, as a sister in Christ, but not as God, not as a mediator. She needed a savior. She needed a mediator. She became the child of God. She's not the mother of God. She's a child of God. She's a daughter of the Most High. She's not the mother of the Most High.